Why is Japan's basketball team so much better than China and the Philippines, even though those countries actually value basketball way more? It is because we have a slam dunk anime 30 years ago, and now it is finally happening in real life. Right, they spoke it into existence. No, big shout out to the men's Japanese basketball team. They just qualified for the Paris Olympics, which is a big deal. And they're the only Asian team to do so, so far. China and the Philippines, I think in theory could, but they'd have to win like every single game. And it's Statistically probably, it's highly just, unlikely. It's just not gonna happen. And you know what the interesting thing is, Andrew? Japan, as a consumer base, they don't really value basketball that much. Right. But they're still really good at it. So I think this sparked a lot of internet comments. If you guys follow Asia basketball circles and just NBA circles in general, people are talking about what does it mean for their governmental systems, their societies, their just team development in general. But also, what does it mean and what does it say about the teamwork amongst them? those countrymen. Maybe the teamwork amongst Chinese guys, I don't know, maybe this is symbolic it's of it. It's probably really I bad. I don't know. Honestly, if you go on the China boards, they are ripping apart Team China right now. Yao Ming's Ooh. frowning in the stands. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. Real quick, we gotta address Andrew. Gotta give a huge shout out to Team Japan, Andrew. Yuta Watanabe, he's in the NBA right now. Rui Hachimura didn't even play because he had a long playoffs. Yudai Baba's in the G League. Yuko Dagashi played in the G League. Tomonaga is the Japanese. Steph Curry is a sharpshooter. And they got this short JJ Berea flamethrower called Yuki Kawamura. Mora. Mm. This guy's like 5'6". Yeah, and that's crazy to see a really small Asian dude tearing it up in the... Uh on the international stage, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of people are talking about Japan sports systems. First of all, I do want to shout out the Philippines did just beat Team China. Right. So technically, they are the better team right now. Right, right. Right. But I will say it is interesting that in the Philippines, basketball is super popular. They love basketball, number one. And then in China, I would say they do love basketball a lot, too. And in Japan, I heard nationally, basketball is number three or maybe four. I think I heard it's number five, possibly. And like you said, Japan, uh, China invested two billion USD in their basketball program. You know, ever since 08 with Yao Ming and Yi Jian Lian, they sort of like peaked off. Right. In fact, Andrew, a lot of people said the Chinese national team basketball has regressed. Oh. So anyway, we're going to get into it, guys. This is a lot of talk. You guys, we are very passionate about basketball. We study the NBA. We do know a lot about international basketball at all. Of course, not as much as some of you guys. But yeah, Andrew, quick thoughts. Japan's crushing it in all sports, individual and team right now, what does it say about their systems? I mean, they're good at, uh, I heard they're outperforming at rugby, soccer, even volleyball right now. Obviously they have the top boxer in their weight class, Naoya Inoue, and it's like, whoa, and the skateboarders are killing too, and it's just like- Oh, and the yo. snowboarders, right? And they're like all these very American sports that America actually values, Japan is actually very good at. It's not just like sharpshooting and things like, like curling, you know, in the Winter Olympics that, you know, shout out to them, but like, you Not know, as many really, people value People them. don't really care about that sport. But I'm saying these are actually sports that people care about. Yeah. Well, um, Andrew, here's another quick thought. I'm going to keep it real. Uh, I'm not as familiar with other countries' situations, but I know that Chinese men, they suck at team sports. Man. They suck, bro. But, but there was a time when China did have a decent basketball team with Yao. But since then, they really haven't reached that level again. Right. Um. A lot of people say uh, the Philippines is also not as good as they should be at basketball, but it may be for different reasons than China. Philippines may suffer from some sort of state-sponsored support, whereas China is almost like lacking at a professional or like elite tier, like some sort of passion for the game. Yeah, yeah. Right off the bat, I do think that if the Philippines team took all the Filipinos from that were like of mixed heritage and made like a Philippines diaspora team, I don't know, that would like, you know, a bunch more yeah. Jordan Clarkson's which Jordan Clarkson is like, he's like a fourth or a half Filipino. So it's like, if they had a, that whole team, maybe they would be better too. Um, I, a lot of people are pointing out <laughs> that it actually just has to do with Japan being a first world country. So a lot of foreign nationals want to go there to live and train, whether they're a fellow pro or as a trainer. So yeah. that really ups the level of like training for all sports because people from around the world find Japan such a pleasant place to live. Oh, you're saying just even a lot of good coaches and other players and kind of sports systems, they like to just be in Japan. So of course it attracts them. Yeah, it's just a great place to live. Um, obviously, you know, if you can kind of like fit in or obviously learn to speak Japanese, it helps a lot. Um, Andrew, I came up with the 10 S's that teams need to have like in Asia, but any team just needs to have like good team sports, Andrew. They need state-sponsored systems. 
individual skill and team selflessness. They need soulfulness and genuine spirit, seriousness and studious scrutiny. And I'm telling you right now, the easiest way to put it is Japan has all 10 out of all 10 for both individual and team sports. And I think they're missing different S's, but China and the Philippines are missing some or a lot of these 10. Uh, all right, everybody, uh, let's get in the comment section. All right, Andrew, somebody said, you know, Kuruko No Basket, the slam dunk movie finally came to life. The manga started in 1990, Andrew, the TV show yeah. started in 1993. They just had a high budget it, CGI movie of slam dunk in 2022. And you know what's crazy is some of those moves that were animated in slam dunk had not really even been done in the NBA until maybe recently. Or some people online in street ball started doing those moves. So what I'm saying is that was a super advanced street ball basketball anime. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that creator, uh, and I'll shout out to all the players at Shohoku High School, they were doing moves that nobody had seen before. Yeah, like, you know, in the animation, they were doing a bunch of moves. A lot of people were talking about how Japan has blue lock for soccer, and that came to life too. So they were just like, is everything that Japan just makes a manga or an anime about just going to happen? Does the manga reflect reality or does reality reflect the manga? Um, it's the first time Japan has qualified without being the host nation in the Olympics for basketball in 48 years. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people were talking about how the women's teams in general are just way more competitive. Japan actually got second place for women's. Right. Overall, obviously, they don't expect to do that well in the Olympics. A lot of people think they might get crushed in Paris, which is probably possible, right? Because of the way they've sectioned out. You need one African right, it's team. The, you need one Asia team. It's the bracketing. bracketing yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate. But I mean, still, but still, yeah, I mean, that's Serbia impressive. and Slovenia are going to miss out due to the way they uh, come out with the bracketing or whatever. But why do you think that Asia women's teams are so much better? I mean, China's women's team is way better relative within Asia and outside of Asia than its men's team. Uh, I would have to say, I guess there could be some type of pooling difference of like the ta pool talent pool of maybe also perhaps maybe a lot of the men are in the military in China too. Some of those men theoretically could have grown up to be pretty good athletes. And then also, uh, uh, maybe women's teams, teamwork, like they just yeah. buy in it together better. I don't know if they're less selfish or whatever, but Maybe there's something to that. There might be something about the way the men are raised. Who yeah. knows, right? Somebody said, literally, literally, it's just the luck of generational talents. If you look at Japan's team right now, they got all the generational talents that are NBA or borderline NBA players. And in 08, China had a bunch of NBA players. You know, they had uh, Yao Ming, Wang Jiji, Menge Batir, Yi Jianlian, and that was just like the luck of that era. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I think sometimes it just comes down to that, I, right? I do think it's luck and timing. That's part of it. Um, somebody said it's not. It's just about systems in general. Japan has clearly invested a ton of money into its systems. And they said, in the Philippines, you either have to be a rich kid or the son of a pro player to get into the right academies. And in China, usually only middle or lower middle class people give up their children to basketball academies oh. to, to have them be trained for the rest of their life because it's such, like, I guess a low probability success outcome right that's interesting yeah like we said guys i don't know um somebody said japan is good at rugby skateboarding rock climbing boxing volleyball they're just like oh they're just having like major success in all of them right uh -huh. now um somebody was saying china just really regressed andrew a lot of the players right now in the cba are getting paid so much they might they might be making a million dollars a year that they feel no pressure to go play in europe or like Australia. Oh, very less pressure to be better, even because they're already like getting paid so much. I mean, that's interesting, but usually you'd think that if you were paying players so much, it would produce the best talent, but I guess not. Yeah, I heard that the Chinese players are really spoiled. They get all the endorsements from Li Ning and Peak and Anta uh, in the country because China is a huge consumer market, but they're actually like not challenging themselves to get better and see like other schemes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, people said that China has dropped to fourth in Asia, F Japan, Lebanon, Philippines, China, South Korea, Iran, Jordan. That is the ranking of the FIBA national basketball teams now. Um, a lot of people were just talking about how Japan just spends its money wisely. For example, a lot of people were talking about corruptions in the Philippines. All the mm. money that should be spent developing the sport ends up in the pockets of the politicians and the businessmen. Um, it's a little bit like soccer in China, Andrew. Soccer in China, I think China, I mean, even basketball in China has some corruption issues. But I heard soccer in China is incredibly corrupt. 
You know, like people are just getting their like nephew to play on the team who's not even good at all. Dave, I actually have this theory too that I think Japan retained a lot of the talent and it didn't like a lot of Japanese people, the diaspora of Japanese people is not as wide as the diaspora of the Philippines or even China. Yeah, I think that when they have a diaspora, they're just international students learning yeah. and then they come back but to I Japan. But I think a lot of people want to stay and live in Japan versus a lot of good talent, to be honest, does leave the Philippines at a young age. And even like, you know, a lot of Chinese people, they like to immigrate to other places too. So I guess that could be part of it as well. Yeah. Japan's retaining all the talent. All right, so if I was to analyze... From what I know, China and the Philippines, Andrew, on my 10S scale, China definitely has state-sponsored systems, right? Right. And I would say some of the players have individual skill, but definitely I'm going to give them a big L on team selflessness. Mm. Uh, basketball, in a five-on-five -five schematic sense, is a lot about teamwork, right? Yeah, and, but... but what they do love in China that I see is very, very popular is street ball. One-on-ones, two-on-twos, three-on-threes. ISO moves, right? Yeah, some of those guys that I see the highlights of, they look like they maybe could be professional basketball players, but they probably cannot play a five-on-five -five game. Right, the schematic IQ, right? Exactly. A, a lot of people were saying both in the China and the Philippines, it feels like they learned basketball watching Kobe Bryant and figured that that was the only way that everybody could play. Right, and, and if you have a team... Full of Kobe's, that's actually not good. Um, Back to the 10 S's, Andrew. I also believe that Chinese are lacking soulfulness and genuine spirit when they play the game because they sort of like, in the academies, Andrew, they're just looking for like femur bones and stuff like that, like tall players, not necessarily people who love the game and want to do film work and have that passion for getting 1% better every day. Yeah, I would say this has been an aspect under a lot of scrutiny for a lot of people saying like, hey, you're not raising athletes to actually love the game and you have to love the game to be extremely good at it. Right. Like, even if physically China and Japan obviously are no different, if the people in China don't have the love for the game, they won't produce as good of players, and then the players won't play together as well. Yeah, you're saying if all the players who actually love the game are, under, are playing in Kings of the Underdog or something like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, uh, seriousness and scrutiny, they probably have that, to be honest, and uh, they'll probably be under a lot more scrutiny now. As far as the Philippines goes, Andrew, a lot of people were saying the state-sponsored systems, that's actually the weak point. Mm. Whereas China is like pouring all the money in, they were saying the Philippines, they just don't have enough money or structures. Right, right, right. I, I do think that for sure the Philippines has the soulfulness and genuine spirit, though. Interesting. But I do not think maybe that, Andrew, as far as the PBA goes, they have the seriousness or uh, studious scrutiny because... They allowed Manny Pacquiao to play a few games as a pro basketball player. Right. Which is kind of an unserious thing to do. Right. It's goofy. Um, Andrew, anyway, there was just a lot of talk. How much do you think realistically like a huge loss in something that you love and you focus on for both China and the Philippines, whereas Japan, they don't even really love basketball there, but they're super good at it. What does it mean what, how does it reflect on a country's systems? Well, again, like I think when you think about how organized the country is, how good they are at getting things done, even if like a, a country realizes that something is an issue and they want to do something about it, but they have a very messy way of like, uh, um, or, like no organization. You mean that, some sort of broken, they, 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 they don't even have the systems it. to fix the system. Exactly, exactly. And in China... China, the, that thing definitely does kind of shock me. I'm like, man. A little confounded, Because right? I'm like, dang, China did have a lot of good players at a time, and they did have a good team. They put a lot of money into it, but where did it all go? It must be something, like physically, I think that there's Chinese players that can definitely be in the NBA, but for some reason, that skill and desire to be like good shooters and good passers and team players and play good defense, which are all the things that you need to play in the NBA if you're not a super superstar. Uh, yeah, essentially like, I don't know. Those people just don't have it. Those guys just don't have it. It's kind of like, and I, and I shout out to Yi Jian Lian because he's actually like from the same like hometown as our grandfather. But like, you know, I felt like Yi always had the talent to be in the NBA. They called him the Chinese Kevin Garnett and he just retired from basketball. But like, Yi always kind of suffered from some lack of fire or lack of actually schematic five-on-five five IQ. Yeah, and I think it just kind of, it's saddening to see. It's not that I'm sad for Team China itself, because I guess, I mean, it would be cool for Team China to do better, but I think it says to me, it speaks more about, like, the teamwork amongst some Chinese guys. And I'm like, dang, yeah. like, Chinese guys can't figure it out. I'm not saying all Chinese teams are bad, but, like, I'm just saying, 
I, I think it does. It, it's symbolic of the culture. Is it a little emperor syndrome? Is it a, it's a, a, it's a, a little authoritarian government? Nobody can make it's decisions. A, it's it's as much as we always say, like China is a collectivist society. I think people always throw that word around. It's like there's a certain generation that seems very individualistic, and that doesn't help you in basketball for sure. Yeah, and Japan obviously has a higher GDP, better living of standard. You know, maybe people will have bigger families, more coaching systems from a young age. Maybe in certain aspects of Japan, it almost feels like kind of America when it comes to sports systems, right? Yeah, so. it feel, almost feels like they're more focused on sports than anything right now. Yeah, so I don't know. And uh, as far as the Philippines go, Andrew, I really love their soulfulness. I do think that obviously they're really struggling to get it together on an infrastructure level. And that's why all the great players, like uh, the guy, the, the most bounciest guy in Asia, Renz, he's a Filipino who plays in KBL, which is the Korean league. Or there's a lot of player, players playing in Japan too. Right, right, right. But that, I think that's, if, if the Philippines can't, uh, sustain the the top talent, then a good talent is going to go elsewhere to play. And but then, at least but they then, can come back for the national yeah, team. Yeah, at least they can come back for the national team. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Like you said, uh, you know, we follow basketball pretty closely. I think it is unfortunate that Serbia and Slovenia are probably not going to make the Paris cut, but that's just the way they're organizing the Olympics this year to get more representation from Africa and from Asia. So let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Shout out to Japan. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.